Hey everyone, my name's Connor and in today's video, we're going to be talking about preparing your investments for tax time. Now, just before we dive deep, I think I should probably quickly address the elephant in the room. For those of you who are familiar with the channel, you'll know that although I do switch up my backdrop quite a bit, recording from a garden is a first. So long story short, just over a week ago, my dad began the very ambitious goal of walking from the Gold Coast, Queensland, all the way through to Sydney. And this is all to raise awareness for organ donation. So to show our support and catch up on a little walking, my family and I I have come along for the journey and right now we're in Kempsey, New South Wales. If you guys want to know more about what he's doing or you want to know how you can help, I'll put a few links in the description below. But other than that, let's jump into the video. So as most of you Australians will know, the end of June not only symbolizes us being a third of the way through winter, it also symbolizes the end of the financial year. And funnily enough, while taxes are for most people the single biggest expense they'll have across the span of their life, very few actually take the time to learn about them. Now to be fair, taxes can be very complicated. Which is why for most people it makes a lot of sense to hire an accountant or a tax professional to do your taxes for you. But that doesn't mean we need to be ignorant on the topic. And this is why Alan and I have made it a priority of ours to put out as much information on tax as possible. But with that being said, it's important to mention, and you've likely heard this before, Alan and I are not financial advisors, nor are we tax professionals. And the information that we publish, although we believe to be factual, should not be taken as financial advice. So what I'm gonna do in this video is walk you through each of the steps I've taken this year in preparing my investments for my tax return. Now, the first thing I did was calculate all of my assessable income for the year. Now, when calculating your assessable income in any given year, there are usually two main types. That's earned income, which may be things like your salary, interest or dividends. And then there is capital gains, which is when you buy an asset and sell it for a profit. And basically each category of income functions on its own until it's brought together at the end to calculate your tax bill or tax refund. Now, there are some types of income where it's fairly straightforward to figure out exactly how much you earn. If you have a salary, you're normally given a notice of assessment or you can check on the ATO's website. But with investments, it can get quite complicated. So what I would recommend for those of you who have property or other larger, more illiquid type assets, pretty much all you can do is just make sure that you keep records of everything. Now with shares, it can get even more complicated, not necessarily because of the asset itself, but rather purely because of the nature these assets are usually traded. Transactions can be confirmed within minutes, you can buy hundreds at a time, and you can do them in really quick succession. So with all of those factors taken into account, it can be really complicated to keep track of it all. Now what I personally do is use a website called ShareSite. Basically, ShareSite is a really easy to use online portfolio tracker. You can upload your trades and they keep track of everything there. Now, I've done a few videos on ShareSite in the past, which explain not only why their services are so vital when it comes to tax, but also the analytics they give you in terms of your actual return is extremely advanced and useful. Now, for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you guys will know that we do work with ShareSite now, which means that for any of our unique viewers, there is a special offer if you do end up using one of the paid plans. But just know that I used them well before we partnered up and I found them extremely valuable and it was just so lucky that we ended up coming to an agreement. So by all means, if you don't have the need for the paid option, just hop on and make a free profile, which is what I did in the beginning. And only if you do decide that their more premium plans would work for you, then consider using the link in the description because it'll just mean that you get an extremely competitive discount. But that's completely up to you, so no pressure. And the next thing you want to do, and arguably the most exciting thing, what most of you probably came to this video for, was to look into the possible deduction. So these are any direct expenses you incurred when earning said income or capital gain. And although there are deductions that can go against your earned income, which Alan outlined in this video, 
Today, sticking with the theme of investments, we're only going to look at deductions you can take for possible investments, namely the most common, owning shares and owning property. Now, in starting with investment properties, part of the reason they're so popular here in Australia has to do with their tax advantages. Things like the building materials themselves, the foundation of the property, and on top of that, all of the fixtures and fittings have their own depreciation cycles and methods that can provide tax advantages well into the future. Now, for this, you can have what's called a quantity surveyor's report completed. Basically, a professional will come to the property, assess all of its building materials, the fixtures and fittings, everything to do with the property itself, and prepare a full tax depreciation depreciation schedule which just needs to be given to your tax accountant and they'll do the rest. An example of a company that completes these reports is BMT. They say that they can identify around $40,000 worth of deductions in the first five years and that's $9,000 in the first year alone. One of these reports will cost you around $800 and given that the $800 you pay for this report can then be taken as a deduction in the following year, it's definitely something I would recommend that you look into. A few other things to keep in mind when it comes to property investment is that the property management fees are deductions as well. The interest on the loan is a deduction. Any of the insurance could be a deduction. And if you go to review your property, although there are some conditions to this, travel expenses can also be deductions. Now, when it comes to share investments, which is likely what a lot of you guys are interested in, there are quite a few things to keep in mind. Firstly, for those of you who have Australian shares, you'll probably be familiar with the term franking credit. If not, I'll do my best to describe it in a minute or less. Basically, franking credits are part of the tax imputation system. They're essentially there to ensure that there is no double taxing when it comes to a business distributing their income. For example, let's say there's a company that wants to give out $1,000 before tax in terms of a dividend. Let's say that they're charge a normal 30% corporate tax rate. So when that actually is sent to John, our hypothetical shareholder, he actually only receives 700. Now, assuming John has an individual tax rate of 32.5%, when he receives that $700, the tax office may be inclined to charge an extra 32.5% on the 700, but the ATO had already taken out 300 from the initial 1,000. So instead, John is given a tax credit of $300, and considering his tax rate is 32.5%, all he needs to pay is the additional 2.5 or $25. Hopefully that made sense, but all you as the investor need to worry about is making sure you have all the information when it comes comes to franking credits, what you've paid and what you owe. Now on the other hand, for those of you who own US shares like myself, you'll want to make sure that you've completed a W8 Ben form. Now for those of you who invest through Stake or eToro like us, you will have the luxury of having this automatically part of the sign up process, but make sure if you don't use one of those providers and it isn't an automatic option that you definitely seek filling it out. Because with this form, you will not have to pay any capital gains tax in the US, only in Australia, and the withholding tax that you pay on dividends isn't 30%, it's halved to only 15%. On top of that, assume you have filled out that form, make sure that you take note of when you do pay it because that is also a deduction as well. And again, I would suggest to make this even easier for you, make sure that you sign up with ShareSite. As you can see here, it's already taken into account in the tax report that they generate. On top of that, other deductions you can consider are any account keeping or management fees. And although I wouldn't recommend this, if you do end up borrowing money to trade shares, you can claim that interest on the loan and any other borrowing costs as a deduction as well. If you paid for any financial advice throughout the year, you can also claim that as a deduction. Now you have to be careful with this one. You can't claim any financial advice that we use to set up your portfolio, but you can for any ongoing advice or advice used to change the mixture of your investments. You can also claim any specialist investment subscriptions or journals that you pay for. And for those of you who use online brokers, you can claim the cost of internet access and depreciation in the computer that you use against any returns that you make. 
And finally, you want to review all of your existing investments, which may be a trade that isn't yet closed or a property that you haven't yet sold and keep two main things in mind. The first and most obvious one is can I take advantage of the capital gains tax discount in this investment? Basically, what this means is for any investments that are held for over a year, you actually get a 50% discount, which means, for example, if you invested $10,000 into shares this year and two years later, it was worth $30,000, there would be a $20,000 gain there, but you would only need to pay tax on the $10,000. The other 10 is earnings completely tax free. So you want to keep that in mind. And the other thing that you want to think about is the potential for any tax loss harvesting. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail on this particular point because I myself don't have much personal experience with it. However, definitely do some further research into this point. There are certain scenarios when realizing losses on a particular asset may provide a tax advantage for you. So make sure to do your research and again, try and talk to a tax professional if you can but that's pretty much it when it comes to preparing my investments for tax time i check my assessable income look at all of the possible deductions and then review my current investments now again taxes can be very complicated and i'm still in the process of learning the ins and outs myself so any questions or any suggestions that you have for me, I'm more than happy to answer or take on board. And with that being said, sorry about the change in set. I hope it wasn't too distracting or the audio wasn't too poor for you guys. If you did like it, let me know by leaving a like or commenting on the video. Please consider going down, hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell. Maybe in the future we'll do more videos from the garden, but whatever happens, you'll be the first to know. Now, if you can't wait for our next upload, don't worry, here's a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, and this one, this is our latest video. Hopefully, one of those appeal to you, but if not, I'll see you next time.